everyone. I welcome you all to this lesson. Today I'm going to take up the topic After Blenheim, which is written by Robert Saudi. In this poem, I will discuss line by line explanations, word meanings, moral, and theme of the poem. So here I begin. First of all, I will discuss the title of the poem After Blenheim, which is written by Robert Saudi. The title after Blenheim refers to the Battle of Blenheim. Through the conversation, the poet also brings forth the destruction and the loss of the lives the battle caused. But still, Caspar, as a representative of the common mass, holds his idea of the famous and the great victory by the English army. Through this title, the poet indicates that. Even after such destructive consequences of the war, common people are not wise enough to take against, to talk against the war. They still hold propaganda indoctrinated by the war mongers. This is a powerful poem which gives a message and a wake up call to seek peaceful solutions to all conflicts. Now I will tell you something about the poet Robert Saudi. Robert Saudi was a poet laureate of England for 30 years. From 1813 to 1843, he was a poet, historian, essayist and a biographer. He was born on 12th May 1774 in Bristol, which is in England. He died in 1843. He used to write long heroic epics, romances, ballad, plays, etc. Robert Saudi's literary ballad after Blenheim was written and published in 1798. It centers the most famous war of the Spanish succession. Now I will give you a brief introduction of the poem After Blenheim. After Blenheim is the story of the Battle of Blenheim and the death and destruction it caused. The poem is an ironical tone where the poet presents the common people's misconceptions regarding the war and their beliefs to glorify the war and the war heroes. In this poem, we see old Casper, the grandfather, praises the war, calling it as a great victory and a famous victory because he had heard the people saying so. He does not know why it was a great victory. He does not know what good can cause the man to mankind, but still he glorifies the war, although he himself was a victim of the war. When his father was forced to escape with his family to save their life, losing their house with no place to rest his head, Jasper even feels the pity of war as we see shaking his head and having a natural sigh seeing a skull brought by his grandson Peter King. But still we see Casper praising the war. The war always leads to death, destruction, injury and pain. Battles are savage, exercise of strength where morality and rationality are consigned to flames. Brute animals' instincts are fanned that unleash the devil in a man. The poet brings out the futility of wars and portrays the urge to kill another human being as something totally abhorrent. Belhem, Belhem is in Germany and the war was fought in 1704, where the British soldiers fought against the French. The British finally were victorious and defeated the French, but at the cost, but the cost to either side was terrible. The scars took a very long time to heal up. Now I start with the first danger, and the lines are. It was a summer evening, old Casper work was done, 
after he before his cottage door was sitting in the sun and by him spotted on the green his little grandchild well he mean now the word meaning belhem is referred is sometimes referred to the battle of hochstedt in bavaria in 1704 in which the duke of marlboro having marched to the upper danube joined the prince eugeni and defeated the french and bavarians under marshal tallard spotted means played green means field or the grasslands well mean is the is the granddaughter of old casper now the explanation of the first stanza in the first stanza with which begins with the picture's description of the summer evening when days are long and tiring and the sun sets late in the evening the main characters of the poem are introduced in this stanza where casper was a german he had a grandchild named velemin casper had finished his day's work and was basking in the soft sunlight in front of his cottage door watching his little grandchild velemin who was playing nearby in the field which was lush and green now the literary device used in this stanza are number 1 the rhyming scheme rhyming scheme is a literary device in which the last word of each line is giving a musical effect this stanza follows the rhyming scheme of a b c b d d and the words from the stanza are evening done door sun green and mine number 2 ballad a ballad is a long narrative poem that tells us a story after blenheim narrates the story of casper and his grandchildren engaged in a conversation about the famous battle of the 18th century in the war of the spanish succession number 3 metonymy metonymy is a figure of speech in which a thing or a concept is referred to by the name of something closely associated with it in the line and by him spotted on the green green refers to the grassland as grass is green in color now i move towards the second stanza and the lines are she saw her brother peter king roll something large and round which he beside the revolute in playing there had found he came to ask what he had found that was so large and smooth and round now the word meanings revolute means a small stream peter king was the grandson of old casper and velemy's brother so large smooth and round denotes the skull of some soldier who had died in the great victory of the battle of blenheim now the explanation of the second stanza in this stanza the poet says that as velemy was playing she saw her brother peter king rolling something which was large smooth and round which he had found beside the stream where he was playing meanwhile casper was sitting and observing the actions of his little grandchildren out of curiosity peter king king takes that something to his grandfather wanting to know about it so he asked his grandfather for the information now the literary device used in this stanza are number 1 rhyming scheme this stanza follows the rhyming scheme of a b c d d d and the words in the stanza are peter king round revolute found found and round now i move towards the third stanza and the lines are old casper took it from the boy who stood expecting by and then the old man shook his head and with a natural sigh it's some poor fellow's skull said he 
who fell in the great victory. Now the word meaning. Expecting means expecting or hoping to get a reply. The great victory refers to the battle in which the English defeated the French. Skull here refers to the most unique part of the human body. The poet, through the use of the word skull, tells us how ruthlessly humans were killed as well as pointlessness of the war. Now the explanation of the third stanza. In this stanza, the poet does not describe the battle directly, but through the conversation between an old farmer, Casper, and his grandchildren. Casper took the object from the boy's hand, examined it, and declared with a sigh that it was a skull of the dead soldier who had been killed in the Great War. It is pertinent to mention that the war caused huge, huge de devastation and the thousands of casualties, but old Casper only claims that it was a great victory, which is ironical. Now, the literary device used in this stanza are, number one, rhyming scheme. This stanza follows the rhyming scheme of A, B, C, D, D, D. And the words from the stanza are, boy, by, head, sigh, he and victory. Number two is the rhyming scheme. The poet uses irony when old Casper says that war is a great victory but does not know why. The poet emphasizes the people's ignorance of the real nature of the war. Number three, repetition. At the end of almost each stanza, there is a repetition of an idea of great victory in which the English war, English people won the battle. Throughout the poem, Casper repeats the victory being famous or great despite being ignorant of purpose of the war. Now I move towards the fourth stanza and the lines are I find them in the garden for days many hear about and often when I go to plow, the plowshare turns them out. For many thousands men, said he, were slain in that great victory. Now the word meanings. Plowshare means a broad blade of a plow. Slain means killed. I find them in the garden means Casper on taking the skull from Peter King answers coolly, which is evident that he was not upset about the death of thousands in the battle. Rather, the only thing that concerned him was that it was a great victory. Now the explanation. In the fourth stanza, the grandfather, that is Casper, further explains very casually that he regularly finds such skulls in good number when he plows his field. The plowshare digs out the skull. He says that many soldiers had laid down their lives in the Great War. These are the remains of those valiant men. Casper expresses his pride by using the term great victory at the sacrifice of the soldiers who laid down their lives in the battle. Now the literary device used in this stanza are number one rhyming scheme. This stanza follows the rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B, D, D. And the words from the stanza are garden, about, plow, out, he and victory. Number two is the repetition. The repetition of the line, it was a great victory at the end of every stanza is only to emphasize that the irony and to deliver the poet's message that war cannot be great and it can do no good. Thus, the poet presents the conflict between the glorious notion of war and the truth of the war in the poem. Now I move towards the fifth stanza and the lines are, Now tell us what it was all about 
young Peter King he cries, and little well me looks up with wonder waiting eyes. Now tell us all about the war and what they fought each other for. Now the word meaning wonder waiting eyes means expecting to see and hear exciting things or portraying curiosity. Now the explanation of the fifth stanza. In this stanza, the poet attempts to distinguish the kind of curiosity and enthusiasm associated with a child. The two grandchildren, Peter King and Velamy, were very curious to know from their grandfather why the people died and what did they fight for. What was the motivation behind the war and what purpose did they serve? They had associated a sense of, a sense of thrill, adventure and excitement with the idea of war and sacrifices. Now the literary device used in this stanza are number one rhyming scheme. This stanza follows the rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B, D, D. And the words from the stanza are cries, uh, uh, are about, cries, up, eyes, war and for. Number two, alliteration. Alliteration is a figure of speech where the repetition of a word or expression in the poem. The whole stanza consists of alliteration in the line now tell us what it was all about, young Peter King he cries. There is a repetition of the consonant sound T in the line and little well me look up. The consonant sound L is repeated in the line with wonder waiting eyes. And now tell us about the war. There is a consonant sound W and in the line and what they fought each other for. There is a repetition of the consonant sound F. Number three, consonants. Consonants is the repetition of a consonant sound in nearby words like the lines repeated from the alliteration. For example, in the line, now tell us what it was all about. Young Peter King, he cries. There is a repetition of the consonant sound T in the line. And little well me look up. The consonant sound L is repeated in the line with wonder waiting eyes. And now tell us about the war. There is a consonant sound W. And in the line, what they fought each other for. There is a repetition of the consonant sound F. Now I move towards the sixth stanza. And the lines are, It was the English Caspers cried, who put the French to rout, but what they fought each other for, I could not well make out. But everybody said, quoth he, it was a great famous victory. Now the word meaning, rout means complete destruction and defeat. Cot means said, it was an old English way, nowadays it is not used. Now the explanation of the sixth stanza. In this, in this stanza, the poet says that the Battle of Blenheim was one of the major battle of the Spanish succession in which the English successfully defeated the Franco-Bavarian army leading to death and destruction. Caspar tells his grandchildren that he does not know what triggered the war and why made him in such gigantic scale happened. He does not even know the reason behind the war. He did not know even try to find out the purpose behind the war. Casper said that he only knew what others told him regarding the war. He had no clue behind it. At last he says that it was a great victory which means that he continuously repeats this sentence as this is all he knew about the war. Although it is constantly mentioned that it was a great victory where the poet emphasizes that actually it was not a great victory, but it wasn't a great victory as it led to 
death and destruction of thousands of lives now the literary device used in this stanza are number 1 rhyming scheme the stanza follows the rhyming scheme of a b c b d d and the words from the stanza are cried rout for out he and victory number 2 repetition the repetition of the line it was a famous victory at the end of the stanza said by the grandfather who could not give any good reason for war but only repeated the above line which was a propaganda that was indoctrinated in the common people the poet wants to emphasize through the repetition of the lines that war was senseless futile and evil and that in war there was no real winners now i went, now i moved towards the seventh stanza and the lines are my father lived at blenheim then yon little stream hard by they burnt his dwelling to the ground and he was forced to fly so with his wife and children child he fled nor had he way to rest his head now the word meanings yon means beyond hard by means very near dwelling refers to the house or building to live in fly means run away fled means the past tense of flee now the explanation of the seventh stanza in this stanza casper recollected the events of the war day at blenheim his father's house that is the great grandfather of peter king and velemy who lived near the stream at belhem it was during that time that the war took place and peter king had brought the skull from that stream the enemy that is the french soldiers burned their house to ashes along with the several innocent people and he was forced to run away with his wife and the child that is the little casper but he could not find any shelter his father that is casper's father became a victim of the war and he became homeless because of the impending war now the poetic device used in this stanza are number 1 the rhyming scheme and the stanza follows the rhyming scheme of a b c b d d and the words from the stanza are then by ground fly fled and head now i move towards the eighth stanza and the lines are with fire and sword the country round was wasted far and wide and many a childing mother then and newborn baby died but things like that you know must be at every famous victory now the word meanings wasted far and wide means great destruction and devastation which was caused childing mother refers to the mothers expecting a child fire and soul refers to the evil spirit of human cruelty now the explanation of the eighth stanza in this stanza the poet describes the severity of the war the line with fire and sword the country round was wasted far and wide means that old casper tells his grandchildren that due to the war the entire countryside was ravaged many people were killed by the sword and their houses were burnt to ashes the war caused the loss of lives of innocent civilians men young and old women pregnant mothers and children all perished there was death and destruction all around the country untold miseries and horror ravaged the landscape it showed both futility of the war and its power to destroy the line but things like that you know must be at every famous victory means that old casper says that you have to pay a price 
for a great victory. These things are very casual. It seems that such a devastation has not affected him and is made to speak what has been taught to him. Actually, the poet through these lines had made an irony in the poem bringing out the actual meaning that war can never be good. It is meaningless. Now the poetic device used in this stanza are number one, rhyming scheme. This stanza follows the rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B, D, D. And the words from the stanza are R, round, white, den, dried, B and victory. Number two, irony. The irony in the poem is made evident by Casper as he says that these things are meant to happen at every battle where there is a famous victory. Number three is reputation. The reputation of the refrain of famous victory have been used to emphasize on the sheer ignorance of common man regarding the cause of the war and damaging the consequences of it. They acknowledge war only by its victory. Now I move towards the ninth stanza. And the lines are, They say it was a shocking sight, and the field was won. For many thousands bodies here lay rotting in the sun. But things like that, you know, must be after a famous victory. Now the word meaning. Field was won means the battle was won. Shocking sight here in this stanza refers to Casper says that people of those times says that it was a very horrible sight after the victory took place. Now the explanation of the ninth stanza. In this stanza, through Casper, the poet depicts the terror of the war when the battle was, was over the line. They say it was a shocking sight after the field was won means that after the battle was won, one could visualize the horrible sight of the death. Why? Because thousands of soldiers lay rotting in the field, in the sun, and there was no one to bury them. Countless dead bodies and decaying bodies lay under the sun and it was so pathetic that there was no one to give the dead man a decent burial. There is no dignity, no glory in the war, only miseries. Even after such terrifying aspect of the war, Casper regards it as a famous victory and says that wars such as this always brings massive loss of life and property. It is inevitable because after all, it was a famous victory which emphasizes the ignorance of the old man about the purpose and consequence of war. Now, the literary device used in this stanza are number one, rhyming scheme. This stanza follows the rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B, D, D. And the words from the stanza are sight, one, hear, sun, B, Victory. Number two, alliteration. The line, they say it was a shocking sight, is an alliteration, where there is a repetition of the consonant sound, S. Number three is assonance. Assonance is a figure of speech in which the same vowel sound, A, E, I, O, U, repeats within a group of words in a line of a text or a poetry. Here, in this stanza, shocking and rotting, the vowel sound O is repeated. Number four, irony. It is ironical that even after seeing the horrors of war, like burned houses, civilians' casualties, death of pregnant women, babies, and rotting corpuses, it glorifies the outcome of war in the form of famous victory at the cost of huge destruction of both life and property. Although Casper was aware of the damage caused by war, 
and that too to his own family yet he seems to be more interested and aware of the victory achieved in the war than its purpose or benefits by repeating famous victory and great victory tells us that caspar knew only that much about the war now i move towards the 10th stand stanza and the lines are great praise the duke of malbro won all our good prince egwini why it was a very wicked thing said little well in mind nay nay my little girl kothi it was a famous victory now the word meaning duke of malbro refers to the english general commander of british force in the war of spanish succession 1701 to 1714 prince eugene refers to the austrian general born in france with melbourne he defeated the french at belhem nay nay means no no now the explanation of the 10th stanza in this stanza the poet says that duke of malbro was an english general and commander of the british forces in the battle of belhem along with the prince eugene represented britain in the battle and defeated the french at blenheim they were the heroes of the battle so caspar sings in their praises wellimine was not convinced as children are innocent they are frank they do not suppress their feelings whatever come to their mind they speak they speak it up so very frankly and eno and innocently well in mind says what their great in it what was their great in it it was a very wicked thing she felt such sacrifice of life and property was unjust and unwarranted it was too big a loss to justify the pain and suffering it caused the last line of the stanza nay nay my little girl has two pauses in it which shows that caspar was doubtful about the greatness of the war and the victory but he was so used to believing blindly the popular belief that it was a great victory that he had not that he did not refute it although in his heart he did not believe his own words when caspar says that it was a famous victory is obvious that old man is hiding all the destructions and agony caused by the war by repeating these two words now the literary device used in this stanza are number 1 rhyming scheme this stanza follows the rhyming scheme of a b c b d d and the words from the stanza are one you gain thing well in mind he and victory number 2 is the archism is the use of archic or the obsolete that is very old and presently not in use words the line from the stanza is nay nay my little girl got he where the words nay and got is not in use today number 3 repetition throughout the poem caspar repeats almost at the end of each stanza the victory being famous or great despite being ignorant of the purpose of the war now i move towards the 11th and the last stanza and the lines are and everybody praised the duke who this great fight did win but what came good of it at last got little bitter king why that i cannot tell said he but it was a great victory now the word meaning god means to say praise means to glorify or to express express approval now the explanation in this stanza the poet says that caspar narrated how in the aftermath of war everyone praised the duke for having brought such a great victory for them innocent peterkin could not reconcile himself 
at the at the stance of his grandpa and puts a very nice question to his grandpa to his grandpa that but what was the result so many people died so many houses burned loss of lives and property pregnant mothers killed newborn babies killed so what was the gain of this victory there were they were small children yet they realized there was nothing great in the victory what good came out of such miseries old casper was speechless he was unable to answer the question raised by the little children all that he could say was that it was a famous victory the remark heightens the sense of irony in the poem as in spite of such cruelties and casualties the old man sticks to his illogical belief that the war brought victory to them now the literary device used in this stanza are number 1 rhyming scheme the poem follows the rhyming scheme of a b c b d d and the words from the stanza are due when last bitter kin and die and victory number 2 is the irony the poet uses irony when old casper says but it was a famous victory or regards the war as a great victory but does not know why as he says why that i cannot tell actually it was not a great victory war cannot be great anyway that's all the readers know knows it the poet repeats that famous victory phrase to emphasize the this irony of people's ignorance of the real nature of war number 3 repetition the poem wants to emphasize through the repetition of the lines that war was senseless futile and evil and that in war there are no winners now i will discuss the theme of the poem number 1 is the horror of war after blenheim uses an ironic structure to bring the idea that war is horrible thousands of persons are killed wounded and maimed houses are burned people become homeless ordinary soldiers lay down their lives war heroes are praised victories are extolled the poet presents the conflict between the glories of the notion nation of war and the truth of war in the poem number 2 is the generation gap another theme of the poem which projects the difference between the viewpoints of old casper and the little children that is the new generation we see that casper had no fresh thinking conventional and untiring they are mostly guided by blind patriotism number 3 is the man's cruelty to man a man kills another man to achieve a great victory without knowing its consequences war always leads to death and devastation the cruelty of man to man because of the worst behavior of men the fourth theme is curiosity and the lack of it the children were too curious to know about the war but old casper was unable to say the reason for the war fifth theme is the complacency old casper without questioning accepts the loss of innocent women and children in the battle of of blenheim as one of the prizes of the glorious victory his com- complaint attitude is not unlike that of the modern politicians who dismisses the death of innocent civilians in the areas of war by referring to them with the impersonal phrase as collateral damage now i will tell you the moral of the poem the poem gives a strong message that war is not an option and nothing ever justifies the loss of lives and destruction caused by the war and rather we can say that war does not makes a country to win or lose it causes destructions between the two 
Hence, we shall avoid, we should avoid war because that always pushes human beings backward. With these notes, I end this poem. Hope it will help you in your study. Thank you.